Okay, so we're going to talk about cutting troughs and trough lengths, and that's going to be different whether you're working with a ring wax or a piece of slab wax like this, just on your approach. But for rings, it's a little simpler because you can approach from the tangency, and you can do so with your files. Right now, I've got just a straight file. You'll notice on one edge, there's no tooth, and on the other, there is tooth, and that allows you to file up to the edge of some pieces without chewing into it. The whole point of this is just to show you how to cut the trough into the side of the band on the ring. And there are a couple of different ways to accomplish this, but primarily, the fastest way to do it is with the file. So as you start cutting in with the push stroke, it doesn't matter if you're using a half round file, or if you're using a needle file, or if you're using this big honkin' file, it's still going to cut the trough the same way. And the nice part is, you can just use the weight and the thickness of the file to cut a nice uniform trough. And the width of the file is actually going to be the guide to make sure that our line is where we want. Now what happens if you're not cutting straight and you need to correct that? Well, there's a couple of tools that you can use. If we go back to the pokey spoony tool, um, you can cut your trough like so and mark your line, right, the hard edge where you want to stop. And carve away that way. But when, when it comes back to smoothing it, Usually, the hard part is getting the surface from this edge right, on the outside flank and the edge on the inside flank uniform. And when you're using a tool and you're trying to prevent chatter, you often need to switch your grip. So you need to come back with something like just a straight edge cutter. This is a Niji wood carving knife. Um, it's just a wood chisel, and it allows you, it's a very tiny wood chisel, it allows you to come and cut in plane, as well as rake in plane, with your wax. You don't need something this fancy. This is basically just a thin piece of metal, like a narrow piece of metal with a wood handle. So if you have a strip of brass or a strip of steel that was cut on the plate shear, or it's like an old letter opener that doesn't work anymore for opening letters, that's totally fine to just reshape as your tool. But the principle is the same, where you're just raking across the surface to cut that clean line. And then you'll find you'll get a little bit of chatter, right, as my tool head runs from here to here. And then you can come back your spoony tool and rake the other way. So I'm going to just switch to time lapse and we'll do a full channel all the way around uh, the edge of this wax and you'll see me switch between uh, the pokey spoony tool and the um, carving chisel and then I'll probably throw in a file because the file is still going to help you clean up these edges. Okay, so what we have here is one side of the trough that we've carved, and I showed a bunch of different carving techniques. And then this side primarily just relied on a simple uh, needle file. And this is a square needle file, and the nice part about the square needle files is when you're carving a trough and you know your widths, um, you can be really lazy. So what I did was I just got my trough established with the carving tools, and then I started following my perimeter, and then on the push stroke, what happens is the thickness of the file itself um, 
acts as the depth guide for when you're filing, so my index finger can feel the edge of the wax rubbing against it every time I go over that radius, and that tells me I'm in the right spot. And then there'll be a, a point when you're filing where it kind of feels like it just goes ka-chunk, ka -wump. And you're driving over enough wax to the point where your file is clogging, and that's an indicator that it's time to come back with the toothbrush and just clean out the teeth of your file so you can actually get some good uniform clean cutting and then clean your wax as well while you get the chance. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back and carve everything else on the opposite side with the pokey spoonie tool to show the difference between the two so they can be compared. So we'll switch to time lapse for that. Okay, so let's talk about the distinction between the channel that we filed, which has a very clean line, and then the channel that we carved, which has a bit of a radius. So a couple of things that we need to understand is when we're filing, we get a, a nice, clean, uniform pressure. But as we approach this line, if our wax trough isn't perfect, you can see that we lose our edging, okay? And that's fine if this is the top of the material and we planned on putting a band ring here or some other detail. Uh, but that becomes a problem as you continue carving. And when you carve with the radius, what works the best is just to use the straight edge of your cutter to cut down, and then when you get to your edge, flick to the central region of your channel, and then turn it around and do the same thing. And the advantage to that is you can follow whatever contour you have with your band ring. Um, the disadvantage to that is you get this nice little radius okay and that's like an aesthetic choice because as you're doing the rake you're going down to your cut depth and you're pulling into the center of your ring and that creates um, a little bit of a shelf something that raises up and so that soft radius is a really nice look um, because it's hard to replicate without doing by hand um, especially when you're going uh, on a contour that's not just linear uh, one of the other disadvantages is when you're carving, if you slip, you can knock out little chunks of your band ring like that, and you'll have to come back and either file it away or build it up with wax. But you can see that this is just as good a trough as this edge, and um, it's really just a different way to get there. So usually I combine a combination of carving and then following up with a file based on the level of detail that I want. Okay, so we've got these two pieces of wax, right? This is the manually filed, and this is the hand-carved, and we're trying to blend them. And the, the nice part is to just hybridize them. So use the tool where it plays to its strengths. So once you have everything carved, if you want something a little cleaner, come back and just fine-tune it with your half-round file or your needle file or whatever you're trying to accomplish. And just know that if you get your widths right, you can carve your seated um, your piece, whatever detail you're trying to put together. You can do it pretty quick, whether you switch back and forth between your carving tools or your filing tools. But um, I always find that the, the slow applied pressure of the file is really the last thing you're going to do. It's that finesse before you're doing sanding and polishing, whether it's flame polishing or you know with a, a light rag. Um, it gives you enough control to bridge the gaps between, you know, the, the manual dexterity carved stuff and uh, just the, the regular filing, which is pretty much autopilot. You're not thinking about it as you start to join these two pieces. Um, so we'll switch to time lapse and we'll get this band completed. <laughs> 